Architecture's greatest significance, according to this tweet, uh, is the way things are built and how look matters to people. That in buildings, the buildings themselves, physical buildings, can manifest identity, meaning, place, and purpose. So if our buildings are collapsing, what does that say about meaning, about identity, about place, about purpose? A lot. Which is why we're sitting gathered here with, because we know it's important that we're not building buildings that are collapsing and which will be a reprimand on our sense of place, our sense of identity, of meaning and purpose. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. More so because, as, the, as this tweet says, it fit that buildings are a physical story are waiting to be read. Just like those buildings, as I said, in that area of Lagos where I live, uh, which has a very uh, a lot of Brazilian history. So the first Brazilians and uh, Nigerians, I mean, that were in Brazil, that came back and settled there and built their house. And there are many buildings like that. I mean, it's a the mosques, and what have you. Meaning, purpose, identity. So if our buildings keep collapsing, of course, we lose meaning, we lose purpose, we lose play, the sense of place and identity. To correct that, we thought it was proper at business day to have those who matter sit down in one room today and talk about this. How can we avoid this? What can we do? What that is extremely very common. People writing for innovation permits. And the next thing you see is they are doing remodeling. I'm forgetting that the building was done 10, 15 years ago. And most of those people, they don't have the drawing, the architectural drawing, the structural drawing, that the present architect or engineer will work on. But all they do is just go to site, take existing measurements, and start guessing. And to top it up, they had additional flaws to it. And once that is done, the next thing they go for is as built drawing. Forgetting that the load that is coming on top of the existing one is a superimposed load that you are putting on top of it. That is another thing that we look at. But there are options to this issue of building collapse. What do we, as people living around, need to do to stop it? Because the building control came with an idea of see something, say something from the initial stage. So that the issue of somebody encroaching on your on your property would not occur. I'll be give you a very good example of somebody encroaching on the rest space. There was an incident last year about an overhead tank that collapsed that collapsed on the on the next property. The, the, the overhead tank has been existing plus or minus 10, 20 years. The next door neighbor converted the drive through that is the 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 headspace that is supposed to be for drive through decided to turn it to flats. Now, the next door neighbor that has the wire pack was just doing a minor renovation work. There come an every rain, they stop the work. The rain eat into the foundation of the wire pack, went straight to the next compound. I think two or two or one or two people died. So my take is this, and I want us to look at it. Who is guilty? Is it the man that erected his tank long before? Or the man that decided to turn the three meter year space? for commercial purposes, for his own gain, and put it on a driveway. 
who is guilty? I want you to think about that. That is what. So I'd like to ask the first question. Um, so what are the key components of an effective regulatory framework for building safety? The key component that gives us an effective regulatory framework. I don't know who would like to go first. Good morning, all. First and foremost, we need to look at legal state. First, as a metropolitan state. Again, beyond that, we have the state as a whole, encompassing all the encompassing all the the other districts and then there is need for what we refer to as development plan for the state that will take you 20 years and that will be a guide for the whole state within all this master plan of development plan we have various zones for various uses and from there we determine detailed plan that gives you an idea of what is expected of very every small bit of the state. Then you have what is referred to as the, 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 the zoning map. The zoning map tells you what and what can be developed in any part of the state. And you have the regulation that guides you what type of development will go into each of these pockets. In other words, we have a zone for different reasons. It tells you about density that you can go, the height of your building, can you build a residential building or commercial, that defines it all. And that becomes a law. Now the issue is, we need to obey the rule and the regulation. Any deviation from the rule is not giving us the beauty that we require. We hear Minister Winke shouting that uh, the master plan for our future is being abused. The same thing we'll be looking at later. And we're saying that all the development plan we have in place is being abused. God, people refuse to obey the rules and the regulations. So, those rules are there, those regulations are there. How much are we obeying? Yes, people are not aware. What about our professionals? Professionals can claim ignorance of it. And so, we should be in the position to guide the public. And so, look at that area. Apart from that, you look at the, all the, 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 the building codes and the regulations. How much of these are we obeying? Yes, we know government has an issue of not domesticating the, the national building code in the states yet. But they are working on it. So these are infractions that affect you know, the framework in terms of safety. If you're looking for safety, all those things that we have in place, regulation and the ordinances, has to be okay. No shortcut about that. An attempt to do a short cut about not obeying the rules and regulations will bring us all these collapses that we're getting. Everybody must be ready to do the right thing at all times in the construction industry. The moment we start with that, then we know that other things will definitely fall properly. So that's the two I've got to mention for you. All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, uh we looking at the, the we cannot just say it's uh, only for the government. We start with the clients and the uh, professionals involved. The clients in the first instance should get the right professionals, be it the architect, the engineers, both at the design and construction stages. We cannot leave everything to the government. We know well, I hate to say this, but we are unruly in this country. You just need to drive around Lagos to know. I mean, traffic signs are there. Stop when it's red. But that when it's red, that is when you see people driving at the uh, junction. So the same thing applies to uh, uh, buildings, you know. 
we have the professionals if they do their jobs properly. The government uh, regulations is there as guidelines, but it's up to the professionals involved and the clients to do the job properly. You see, um, in Lagos, the simple language, for example, for materials, one of the major challenges in Lagos is the material. Even water is a problem. Everybody uses any kind of water that they get. Generally, because Lagos is low line, we all know that uh, there's a problem with water. It says portable water, water that you can drink. There is no effective framework to make sure that people, especially in the river, in that even lucky access, that they will not use uh, the water, the near surface water, for their concrete. Because concrete can be good today. After a couple of years, you start having issues. So when we look at building regulatory framework, we need to look at material sources and make sure that we put in place things that will control people from using wrong materials. When talking about foundation, we're always talking about engineers as we're all there. I'm happy that Oki mentioned the issue of uh, uh, piling, piling, piling. Most of us engineers, developers, and so on and so forth, we commit some blunders. I'm sorry if I'm being hard. Um, the artisans that do bore, you know, uh, boring and take samples for you, if you give them three boreholes in an area, it mentions something close to that. Once they do two, they will lock the third one for you. It happens a lot. As long as I am today, I still pack myself to the field for the now. So there must be adequate regulatory measures. In fact, if I have my way, I will start registering all artisans doing boreholes. They are, they are the drillers. They should be registered. You have the drillers, you have the fallers. Those ones that are, you know, like, uh, you know, helping hands. The regulatory framework is incomplete because no matter what you use to build your house, if your foundation is fault, it's likely to come down. They should be registered. If possible, such as reports that have been submitted, let their names, if possible, their pictures be there. Because the engineer that sits at home, it is what you are giving that you are going to use to design. Mm -hmm. It is what you are giving. So the geotechnics engineer or our colleagues in uh, uh, the, the geologists, you know, ge geophysicists that are involved in all these soil tests, you sit at home, you are waiting for your driller to bring you uh, log. You can log anything for you. It is not because I have seen it, I have involved. Because I've been practicing, those who know me, they know me. Don't see the money framework that will allow everybody to sit up. Don't underrate anybody in the construction industry. Thank you. Thank you. I'm an engineer, I've been an engineer for 25 years. And I want to state here that any time a building collapses anywhere in Nigeria, I feel pain. I feel a sense of failure, whether I'm involved in the building or not, but as an, I, I'm ashamed for our profession. Why do I say this? We're talking about regulatory framework. If the engineers do their job, the regulators don't have work to do. They will just come and sign paper and go. So the problem is with us professionals. When we're talking about people you know, you talk about soil test now. As a student doing my industrial training with Obi Obebe in 1985, my first assignment was to go and do non-destructive tests on a building that was failing. What did we find out? There was a soil test that was done for the plot next door by the same company. So they said, okay, we're designing for this one next door. Let's use the same results. Guess what? 
That place was a refuge dump. The building started failing. So I learned very, old, very early on in my career not to joke with those things. We see geotechnical engineers do copy and paste. They take a test result from these streets in Victoria Island, dub it, and use it for another. I mean, as engineers, we must know that after doctors, when the most important, we, we deal with lives. We deal with lives. So, whether they are regulatory frameworks or not, we owe it to the society to do the right thing. When that building came down in Berat, two days I could not eat. I felt pain because I felt that as professionals, we had failed the society. I came to UK and the man was confused. He went to play tennis, but this Nigerian friend did not go. And he asked him what happened. He said he was given money in loot. He was given money to buy a machine. And he found one in UK, another one manufactured by Japan. The, the Japan machine will help him to check Nigerians. The, the UK on which is obsolete will make Nigerians to be dying before him. But he has his children out of school. He has not been paid his rent. He has not been able to pay his rent. If he buys the UK own, he will make money and he will pay the children's school fees and he will pay his house rent. If he buys and that one, Nigerians will be passed dying. If he buys the Japan own, then all Nigerians will be alive, but they will remain in penury. Which one should he buy? That was his confusion. That is what is happening in Nigeria today. If you get into a ministry and somebody has not paid his house rent, which has increased from 250 to 1 million, his wife is to be operated on, and the medical bill is 100 or 1 million, and his children has been sent from school, and a developer has come and said, please approve this project, I will give you 1 million. And at that time, the wife called, honey, please, can you help me? I'm dying. Will he not collect the money? Clap if you want to clap. So the question is, yes, I'm running up, please. The international uh, MC. So the question is, where do we fight corruption? It should be from government. And what provisions have you made for the people who are going to retire? Why are all eyes on the judiciary? Thank you. Um, artisans who work in these high-rise buildings that are being put up, I wonder whether labor laws monitor their safety. I wonder whether they understand that there is such a thing as forced labor. How many of us in the room understand that there is such a thing as forced labor? And I'm not talking about chains. So we might talk about regulators, we might talk about developers, we might talk about the experts in the building industry, but what about those who get affected in the building? They're not the owners, they're not the elites, the workers, those who work there, those who access those buildings, we are all at risk. We are all at risk. Right now we're in this building and nobody really knows the social class of everyone in this building. Do we know that we have a right when you walk into a place to check for your safety in that place? Sometimes we see building sites where they're wearing slippers, no helmets, nothing. They just want to be paid for that day's job. Or perhaps they work for a business and the, the, the foreman or the project manager says, everybody go to site. There are no PPEs provided for the workers. I wonder whether Nigerian workers understand that you can say, Oga, I cannot, enter, I cannot work at height without ABC. I think it's a cultural problem. And if you begin to address these safety issues from the ordinary citizen who says, this is not right. And every worker says, I'm sorry, I can't take this job. I have a wife, I have children. 
And if your boss forces you to go into that space, that is forced labor, according to the International Labor Organization. Do we have such laws in Nigeria? Do we have that awareness in Nigeria? Or we just want to put food on the table? It doesn't matter. Safety doesn't matter. Let me quickly... That's a, car, that's a carryover. Yes, yes, my audience. Yeah. Uh, my recent, my experience on the field, I want to direct that to my professor, uh, Ewa, from UNILA. You are a lecturer, and most your programs are coming to the field. And what we have discovered on the field is that there should be some kind of training session for them after graduating. Because there is a, 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 a white gap, a, 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 a dichotomy between theory and practice. When we were in school, it was, it was like abstract until when we went to the field and we discovered some of them who were with me, we have all these NYCs, they were passing through, many of them passed through our country, and I did. Uh, 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 last month or so, I had to phone the HOD of some institute that look, didn't you teach them technical drawings that what we are doing here is technical drawing, but they didn't get it. I phoned each institution one by one that it was very embarrassing. One or two of them are here, I'm not embarrassing them, but just for them to learn from the field. So when you are saying professionals, we are just giving work to professionals. Do you know that some correct people or some uh, maybe couple, couple register member cannot have do complex setting up? Why are you aware of that? Absolutely. So let's uh, that, that, let's turn that. Let's turn that. Let's take a round of applause for him. Before I give my thoughts about this uh, question, just to have a quick reflection on the first question you asked. I think everything boils down to education. I remember when I had my BSc study in Okafemi um, University many years ago. I mean, not until when I got out and you know, started practicing, I never knew anything about sustainability. I mean, it's, it's so funny. I don't know if there's a student here whether she can uh, also attest to that, whether probably they included that in the current curriculum in school. So it's very, very funny because a lot of things that are expected of professionals to put into practice on the field, you get to learn them on the job by the time you leave school. So in my opinion, I think the first thing that has to be addressed as a critical factor that results into people not even understanding the import of climate change is the education they receive while in school. And I'm sure that when you look at the vast hurries of conversation that is happening across the world, there shouldn't be anything you're studying in school today that will not include conversation around climate change. So for the academias who are here, I think we need to all go back to the drawing board and see how to have that inclusion in the study as a compulsory course, not even an elective that someone will have to you know, think. I'm sure there was a time where entrepreneurship also become, I mean, became a very uh, uh, a strong narrative that whatever you are studying, you must learn entrepreneurial skills. So the same thing has to happen to climate change. Uh, as regards to the issue of collaboration, I mean, it still boils down to education. Because the way we were taught in school is like, as an architect, you are the boss. You know, you are the one that receives the brief, it's your imagination, you are the one that designs and all of that. And we take that understanding into the field. When you have your first start startup meeting with other professionals, you're looking at them not as your contemporaries, not as uh, um, people who also have equal contributions to make to the success of the project. It's like you are the boss, and whatever you tell them, you know, I want this kind of wow, aesthetical, appealing structure that you must. So those are the kind of orientations that a number of people take into practice that education has to correct. Because it's, it's not like when they say that a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Someone that has that kind of orientation and gets to become probably at the top of leading projects, it will be very difficult for other people to correct that kind of orientation. Then I'm also looking at the position that the standards that have been placed in the industry you know, you know, can go a long way to kind of like create that kind of robust conversation 
the convention should not be in this kind of conferences. I think wow. all professional bodies have events. Yes. You know, I think in next week or so, Nigerian Institute of Builders are going to have their own too. What kind of conversation will go on there? Because these are issues that have to be discussed. These are issues that have to be addressed with professionals. Okay? If because the issue is not who actually bring about the project. I mean, anybody, any professional within the industry can receive a brief from the client. You understand? How do you set up the consortium? How do you do you understand the roles and responsibilities of each of the players? So that as an architect who has a direct relationship with the client, you not think, oh, I can be the builder at the same time, I can be the instructor engineer at the same time. You know, so having that area of specialization and understand the way we need to work cohesively, I think that's the area that needs to be solved when we are having conversation. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic. Finance. This is the problem. I'm a developer. And I have found myself in places of compromisation. On which it's not a choice. It's a choice. But the truth is, in government too, they are also very smart. So even if they agree, they don't agree in the way that you will know that they agreed. Because can you go to a government for an approval? And this is the government. They allow you to come in. Now they say they won't give you approval. You're on top of a coaster. And he said, everybody is on that street. This is the only property that is left on that street. He says, we'll come when the time comes. That means most of the buildings in Lagos State don't have approval. And I'm, I pass the streets tomorrow morning. There is an edifice. And I'm like, huh? Why did I back out? When backing out, I lost 10.2 million. Because I've paid for architectural designs and all that. Before you go to government, you pay for all those things. Yes. And they tell, they won't give you approval. But my you can go and be beautiful. Don't worry, we come later. We'll just be everything's okay. <laughs> and they say it's all right. Where is the approval? It's not all right like this because these are people's money. So why will a developer go ahead? He will have to. He has collected money from the bank. The banker's interest is madness. Debt at the arrival. I don't know how they take money from bank to do development. The off takers want what they did not pay for. They, the problem is the payment repayment. It's a major Africa problem, I mean Nigeria problem. Other places, I like what the one was saying, that's what it, they have buildings that the profit is not coming to the next generation. And they are not interested to make the profit now. Because they have a generational plan. We don't have. I want to get to sites today, make money today, and live today. I am not planning that money to be made by that. Because I don't have the money, so I have to get it out now. That is the problem. Sir. Everything that is happening in this collapse is coming from finance. Once we address finance, we will address collapse. We developers, because we know that we are not in a hurry, we will build the beauty, the, the lapska, we will do the right thing. Don't worry, we will wait. Because when lapska when you go and take approval, it says it's going to take five years. You have borrowed money. Off taker wants to kill you. You told them two years, it will be ready. Even approval has not come out. Ah, you leave approval. But if I know that this phone thing, I have 50 years, 25 years to pay, I will sit down with them in the gospel. Anytime you are ready, me, I'm ready. Yeah. I think that we are together here. We are ready. So, because the funding is not there, so how do we have the funding? We need, as a nation, think of how we can increase our value. That we bring in more funds generally. 